As you can see, this video will deal with the binomial probability distribution. Now, we're going to use this particular session as quite an introductory session. We're not going to get embroiled in a lot of detail about the formula or about a lot of the um, computations. These will be the subject matter of other videos elsewhere in the course. But in the in this particular case, we want to introduce the idea of binomial distributions and when and why binomial distributions may be used and for what purpose. And uh, we can look later in other situations, in other sessions, at applications of the binomial distribution in a business context. But for the moment, we just want to go through what is meant by the binomial probability distribution. So the class will look at binomial experiments and also some associated notation. I want to introduce notation, how, how it's written and the way it's, it's written. And that may seem somewhat confusing as we go through it. But again, <clears throat> just make notes of it. Uh, it's, it's actually quite clear the, the way it's written. But it's, it may not be uh, in a format that, uh, with which you are familiar. And the binomial experiments are uh, very important to understand. As I said, uh, they can crop up in a lot of situations. So let's talk about binomial, binomial experiment. It's a statistical experiment that has the following properties. It consists of n repeated trials. So there are a number of repeat, repeated trials. It's, it's performed more than once. It's over and over and over. And out of this process of performing it over and over, the probabilities, the associated probabilities, can be computed and outcome, outcomes can be calculated. Each trial can result in just two possible outcomes. We call one of these the success and the other is the failure. So there are just two possible outcomes to a binomial experiment, pass or fail. The probability of success is denoted by P, uh, and it's, it's the same for every trial. The probability remains the same. If we perform the experiment now and again in an hour's time, the probability remains the same. The trials are independent. That is, the outcome of one trial does not affect the outcome of other trials. For example, if we toss a coin and it comes down heads and we toss it again, because it came down heads this time, it doesn't mean it's going to come down tails the next time to balance it. It could come down heads the next time. In fact, we could toss the same coin a hundred times and it could come down head every time. And that's not because the coin is biased or we're doing something wrong. It just means there is a probability. On, on, on every tr uh, toss of the coin, the probability is 0.5 that it will come as heads. So it could come down as heads every time. We toss it 100 times or even more. So the trials are independent. The outcome of one trial does not affect the outcome of the next trial. Now consider the following statistical experiment. If we flip a coin three times and count the number of times the coin, the coin lands on heads. This is a binomial experiment because the experiment consists of repeated trials. We flip the coin three times, so it's repeated. So that's one of the uh, requirements that's been passed. Each trial can result in just two possible outcomes, heads and tails. Therefore, the probability of success is 0.5 on each trial. Well, each trial can result in just two possible outcomes, heads and tails. It's binomial. Two. Two possible outcomes. The trials are independent. Getting heads on one trial does not affect whether we get heads on the other trials, as I said earlier. So, there's our three conditions for statistical, for this particular ex, uh, statistical experiment. 
Now, notation, well, this may look somewhat confusing to you. Don't get too worried about it. Uh, it's important to understand what the notation is saying and, and what it means. So we'll just explain the, the notation. And this notation is related to the binomial probability. So x is the number of successes that result from the binomial experiment. So x is the number of successes. n is the number of trials in the binomial experiment. <clears throat> it's the number of times the experiment is performed. If we toss a coin, it's the number of times we toss the coin. p is the probability of success on an individual trial. So we know that the probability of success in getting ahead when we toss a coin is 0.5. Well, that remains the same throughout. It doesn't change to 0.2 later. It remains 0.5 right throughout the experiment. Q, the probability of failure uh, on an individual trial. Now, Q is just equal to 1 minus P. The probability of failure is just equal to 1 minus the probability of success. Because the probability of success plus the probability of failure must add up to 1. And then we have n factorial. Uh, this is a, a mathematical expression that we often encounter when we deal with combinations and permutations and so on. So n factorial means we just simply multiply a number by its previous number minus 1. So, for example, 4 factorial would be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. That's what we mean by n factorial. So 3 factorial would be 3 times 2 times 1. 3 factorial. So that exclamation mark means factorial. And we read it as n factorial. And what it means is just, as I said, multiplying the number by 1 less than itself and then by 1 less than that again until we get down to 1. Now, the binomial expression, which is b, b for binomial, bracket, where we have the, the probability of successes and the number of times the experiment is conducted times the probability of success. So it's the, the probability that in an n trial binomial experiment results in exactly x successes, exactly x successes, not less certainly not more, when the probability of success of an individual trial is p, and p is a constant. p doesn't vary from one experiment to the next. We also come across this term, which is more generally encountered when we study combinations and permutations and in, in mathematics. But in this case, we do come across this term. It's um, the number of combinations of n things taken r at a time. So it's the combinations of n things taken r at a time. n, c, r. A binomial random variable is the number of successes x in n repeated trials of a binomial experiment. That's what the binomial random variable is. It's the number of successes x in n repeated trials of a binomial experiment. Suppose that we flip a coin twice, two times. We, we flip a coin twice and count the number of heads, count the number of successes. The binomial random variable is the number of heads which, uh, we can, which can take on the values 0, 1, or 2. So we, we toss the coin twice we might get two tails, a tail and a tail. We toss it again. So we have no heads. We could toss the coin twice and we get one head. Or we could toss the coin and we could get two heads. So these are the possible outcomes. We're only tossing the coin twice. So we can get zero, we can get one, or we can get two. And the binomial distribution is as follows. The binomial distribution has the following properties. The mean of the 
the distribution mu we always use mu for mean for the average of the population mu x is equal to n times p the n is the the number of times the experiment is performed and p is the probability of success well the probability of getting ahead is 0.5 if we toss it twice it would be 2 times 0.5 which is just equal to 1 so if we toss a coin twice we'd expect to see one head that's what we would expect we might be surprised to get two heads we might also be surprised and get two tails no heads but we would expect to see one the variance and I'm not going to prove this but the variance which is called Sigma squared X variance is Sigma squared uh, that's equal to n times P times the probability of getting a tail 1 minus P so that's the variance of X the standard deviation is always just the square root of the variance so uh, standard deviation is the square root of the variance and that's what we've got there now the number of heads is 0 1 or 2 that's what we can get we toss the coin twi uh, twice we get no heads we get one head we can get two heads the probability of getting let's say one head probability of getting uh, one head is NP so we'd expect uh, NP so we expect one head which is 0.5 the probability is 0.5 no heads 0.25 two heads 0.25 so we'd expect that sort of table to emerge that would be our expectation now binomial by binomial formula and binomial probability well binomial probability refers to the probability that a binomial experiment results in exactly X successes exactly X successes for example in the table we had earlier on the previous slide we see that the binomial probability of getting exactly one head in two flips of a coin is 0.5 so that's the probability now given the probability of getting uh, a certain outcome X in n trials with the probability P of getting this outcome X we can compute the binomial probability based on the binomial formula now the binomial formula suppose that uh, a binomial experiment consists of n trials and results in X successes if the probability of success on an individual trial is P then the binomial probability is and I appreciate that looks uh, quite difficult if you haven't done uh, any statistics before uh, that will look um, quite difficult but all it's saying is that the binomial uh, probability of getting X in n trials with a probability of p is equal to the combination of n x is the way we have uh, x outcomes the number of ways we can have x outcomes and in n uh, chances you see when we perform an experiment uh, we may get the x the the desired outcome let's say the head it might be the first one we toss the coin we get a head straight away we we might have to toss it if we're going to toss it ten times we might toss it again and again get a tail but we might toss it a third time and get a head so what we have to do is look at all the possible outcomes uh, for where the head comes so we'd have to record all the possible outcomes and this formula simply does it for us we can uh, apply this formula NCX and it'll give us the number of possible outcomes where the heads appear perhaps as I said earlier we toss it 10 times and we don't get any heads that's a possible outcome or we could toss it 10 times and get 10 heads that's a possible outcome 
what we'd expect to happen is we get five we toss it ten times we get five outcomes so that particular uh, ncx will give us the number of possible of possibilities the number of possible outcomes and px is the probability of getting x getting ahead which is 0.5 and 1 minus p to the power of n minus x well that's the probability of not getting ahead it could be written out alternatively in factorial notation like that which i don't really want to get into because it's already done once so let's leave it at that but you may encounter it like that and you should recognize it as the binomial probability expression Now, suppose a dice is tossed five times. What's the probability of getting exactly two fours? Well, the solution is a binomial experiment in which the number of trials is equal to five, the number of successes is equal to two, and the probability of success on a single trial is one-sixth. Uh, it's a dice. A dice has six sides. All dice have six sides. So the one that's showing, the one that's shown on top, that has one sixth of a chance of being there because one of the other faces could have come up so the probability of getting a particular outcome on one throw of a dice the probability of getting a uh, a two if we throw a dice and what's the probability of getting a two well it's 0.167 approximately or one sixth one in six there are six faces and one came up what's the probability of that is uh, well 16.7 percent or 16.66 percent therefore the binomial probability is well it's um, getting two four so is prob the binomial is b bracket two two fours um, five times is the number of times we're going to try this particular experiment and the probability of getting a 4 is 0.167 if we apply our formula the one we had on the previous slide and work it out we get 0 0.161 16.1% so the probability of getting exactly two fours is 16.1 percent in other words the probability is that you will not get two fours the balance of the probability would suggest that uh, other numbers will appear but sometimes uh, we might want to work out the probability of getting exactly some outcome so it's 16.1 percent you can do that for no fours you can do it for one four for two fours for three fours and so on and if you add it all up of course it'd come to one because one of these outcomes must appear it may be that no fours appear or it could be one four or it could be that two fours because it's it's thrown um, five times only here i've calculated i think for uh, yeah five five times but here it is uh no fours is a possibility so there's there are six possible outcomes now a cumulative binomial probability refers to the probability of getting a binomial random variable falls within a specified range for example it's greater than or equal to a stated lower limit and less than perhaps or equal to a stated upper limit so it's in a range we want they want to find the probability that's within a certain range not not one just one answer just one particular outcome but a range of outcomes so somewhere it falls within a certain range we want to work out that sort of probability for example we might be interested in the cumulative binomial probability of, of obtaining 45 or fewer heads in 100 tosses of a coin so we want to see what's the probability of getting 45 heads or 44 43 42 what's the possibility of getting any number no heads even all the way up to and including 45 what's the probability of that happening this will be the sum of these individual binomial probabilities so we'd have to take 
all the possibilities. The possibility of there being no heads. 100 tosses, 0.5 probability, and that's our first expression on there, plus b, x equals 1, so there's one head, again, 100 exper uh, experiments, 100 trials, again, the probability remains the same, not 0.5, uh, plus, and that would be b bracket x equals 2, which is not written here, b x equals 2, Again, 100 trials, probability is the same, 0.5, uh, which so we'd have probability of x equals 0, x equals 1, 1 head, 2 heads, 3 heads, 4 heads, all the way up to, we've got here, b, x, x equals 45. Again, 100 tosses, and the probability is 0.5. So we'd have to work it out for each one. Um, a cumulative binomial probability refers to the probability that a binomial random variable falls within the range, as I said. Now, there is a way of working this one out. And instead of just working each one separately, we could do it uh, with Excel. Uh, the solution to solve the problem, we compute 46 individual probabilities using the binomial uh, formula. The sum of these probabilities is the answer we seek. And as I said, that's the way uh, we would work it out. Da, 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 and add it up so it becomes 0.184. So the probability of getting something in that range is uh, 0.184. Uh, we could use the binomial distribution in Excel, which is uh, an interesting way of getting. Um, a coin is tossed 100 times, what's the probability of getting exactly 45 heads? Exactly 45 heads would be uh, 0.184. So that would be exactly 45. The sum above it, actually they should add up to more than 0.184 because we should add up x equals 0, x equals 1, x equals 2, x equals 3, and so on, up to x equals 45. If it's false, uh, then the probability of getting exactly 10 fours would be that sort of figure. So we can use the binomial uh, formula to give different figures. So what's the probability of a student is accepted at a prestigious college? Uh, let's say it's 0.3. If five students from the same school apply, what's the probability that at most two are accepted? To solve the problem, we compute three individual probabilities using the binomial formula. The sum of all these probabilities is the answer we seek. So the probability of no boys getting in <coughs> x equals 0, probability of 1 by getting in, or 2. Um, so what we've got then is that string of binomial expressions, b, x is less than or equal to 2. Uh, we have the 5, probably of, is, is 0.3, I should say the probability of getting in, 5 students. What's the probability that at most two are accepted? At most two are accepted. So we're ruling out the possibility of uh, more than two being accepted. Three, four, five. So th they can't happen. So we have the, uh, the binomial of x equals zero. No, nobody gets in. x equals one. One, one by gets in. So one student gets in. Could be a girl, I suppose. Uh, doesn't say if it's what the gender is, um, and x equals two. And then, if we write that underneath, we find the probability of at most two are accepted is 0.83.
Using Excel, we could use the binomial distribution and type in that expression and it will give you the same answer. So it's a somewhat complicated video because of the terminology and because of the expressions and because of the, the way the formula are met and, and the way they crop up and we have to deal with them. Uh, what we need to know in this video is the conditions for binomial distributions. What, um, what are the factors we need to take into account? The probability remains the same, for example, that they are independent trials. And just look at the, the conditions that are necessary for um, the distributions to be used. And then how it's, it's calculated. And the notation is complex. You need to become familiar with the, the notation. But this happens through use and exposure to the notation. So it's probably best to go back over the video several times and just become familiar with the, the notation and become happy with the way it's written. Uh, if you go online and look it up, you will also see the same type of notation is used online. So it's it's standard notation. Uh, what we need to do to know is the importance of the binomial probability distribution um, and the conditions that must be met before it can be used. But that's all we're going to deal with in this video. So let's leave it at that and say thank you for watching.